So we've got Worcester Bosch Junior, high pressure. We came out to this yesterday, the expansion vessel was flat. So we recharged that. But we had a suspicion it was the plate ease exchanger causing the problem. So we left it overnight and we've come back today. It took a bit of time. We're back at three bar again. So we're just going to pull the expansion pipe out, make sure that's clear and just rule out once and for all the expansion problem. And then we're looking at the plate heat exchange that's been old. We already checked the filling loop yesterday. The filling loop wasn't passing. PRB's dripping. So we want to disconnect this tube here and just make sure that's clear. So we've deflated the expansion vessel as well, just in case there's any pressure on the back side of it. Um, it's not, hopefully, won't spurt out at us. Okay, so we disconnect the expansion holes. Seems pretty clear, we have water dribble out of it. again. So we've turned off the cold water supply now to the property, not just to the boiler. The reason we've done that is there's a lot of mixer taps in the property. So I want to eliminate even a mixer tap back passing into the system. So we're going to run the heating now, max and see what happens to this pressure. So what it rises to. And then we're going to reinstate the cold and do the same again and see what the difference is. Okay, so we're just running the heating flat out now. Expansion vessel's recharged. Coal supply to the pot is turned off. It appears to be rising just gentle. Okay, so we've had the boil on for about 10 minutes now. The turnpipe's hot. Pressure's just nice and stable. and reintroduce cold water in a minute. See what happens to this pressure gauge. So we've just put down a merchant so we have a new plate heat exchanger. We've been gone probably 15, 20 minutes maximum. The pressure's already gone up. With the coal main turned back on. Right, so the cold water's off downstairs. We've got the pressure in the system again. There we go. Right, we should be able to start cracking there. Cracking the plate open. as much water as possible because there's a pain for losing water on these when you're trying to take it out right so two screws on your plate heat exchanger and it should just fall back and you can see we've got tubs everywhere underneath this boiler it's up in the loft there's not much room
can do these. We tend to try and just take it out, move the pipe out from underneath if we can do. So today we've moved the cold pipe. Just drop it back, tilt it, and bring it from underneath the boiler. Find it saves messing with all the hydro block and doing every connection and tightness testing and everything. Plate heat exchanges out. New one's ready to go back in. Make a note of the direction of these arrows on this boiler. These point towards the pump. The arrows are going towards the pump, so the new one has to go back in the same way. Remember that. New arrow is ready to go back in. Just use an Allen key, reach underneath, pull the O-rings out with those, fit the new ones back in, same same way. Underneath. There's one. So you get your plate in and out in 10 minutes. Okay, new plate heater exchanges back in. Coal pipe's reconnected. Coal's back on. Bleeding the main heat exchanger. It's important to this on this boiler, it's the highest point. Originally, I've had some issues with this boiler. Um, those repulsors have been there for five years. So we should be up and running now. The system's full. Ready to put the heating on, see what happens. 